Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo from DatingFire.com and DatingAdviceGuru.com. You know, as a coach and a counselor for women on dating and relationships, I often run into situations where a marriage has ended. And there's always this question about what makes a man leave his wife like this? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. What makes a man leave his wife for another woman? Hey, stick with me through it. I got some great stuff for you today. And of course, do the big three. Number one, if you like this video, why not like it and subscribe to it? Number two, turn on notifications. And number three, if you have any questions or comments you wanna leave, leave it down in the comments section below. Oh yeah, a woman can feel betrayed in her marriage when this happens, right? When a guy leaves his wife for another woman, it can leave deep emotional scars. And some women I coach are also dating a married man and they wanna know what are the signs he's gonna leave his wife for her, if you're the other woman. And even though women leave men at a slightly higher rate, it seems to be much more painful for women to have to deal with this kind of trauma. Yeah, in case you didn't know, women tend to leave men or walk out on their marriages more frequently than men do. They file divorce more frequently than men do. And you may have cause for concern in your own marriage. He may be showing you signs that there's another woman in his life. You need to know what he intends to do about all of it. And you sure as heck want to know if he intends to leave you, right? Look, the statistics aren't pretty. Over 50% of all marriages will end in divorce and the numbers don't get any better when you go into it further. The answers I'm about to show you might surprise you. This is some advice for a woman who wants to save her marriage or her relationship. And make sure you stick around to the very end because I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how to save your relationship. Because if you don't do something, your situation will only get worse. Is he leaving? Sign number one, no appreciation. Look, most men show their love with acts of love, if you're familiar with the love languages. They'll, they'll help you out, they'll give you advice, they'll take action where needed. And one of the things he looks for is appreciation for his showing love for you in this way. A man needs your acknowledgement and gratitude. Frequently, women don't see men's behavior as loving, misinterpreting it as being ego or something else because it's not how she would express it. Right? What it, this does is it leaves a man in a situation where he's not getting appreciated for the love he's showing. He doesn't know that she's not seeing what he's doing as love, so he just feels rejected on an emotional level. Now this is a lot more common than most women are aware. Of course, both of you have a need for appreciation. I'm not saying he shouldn't appreciate you. Come on, what are you talking about here? But this particular video is not about how to get him to appreciate you. It's about getting, recognizing the things that are making him pull away from your relationship or your marriage. One of the best things you can do in your relationship is to set aside time to recognize the things you may be missing when it comes to appreciating him. Sometimes you have to, well, you gotta have the other person point out where they were loving you if you're not seeing it. Okay, sign number two is money, money. You're probably aware that money is one of the biggest areas of contention and struggle within a relationship. If you're not on the same page as him with respect to spending, well, you should spend some time getting that straightened out because women and men have very different ideas about how money works within a relationship. You can't take this for granted. Most couples wait until this becomes a problem instead of facing it head on. You must know how the other person sees their spending habits and how you can come out to have some mutual understanding and avoid this kind of conflict. So some of the areas about money you gotta discuss are budgets, you gotta discuss savings, how much you wanna save, where you're gonna put your recreational spending, your retirement money. Again, most people don't tackle these difficult questions until they get difficult. So don't wait till then. Sign number three, infidelity. Now, I don't like the term cheating. It's, we use that term because it's a very harsh indictment. It's driven by anger. It comes from anger and betrayal. And I get it, yeah, both of which are legitimate emotions to feel, of course. But the truth of the matter is that both men and women, they cheat in about the same numbers. And the person who is cheating is not doing it to hurt the other person, no matter how much it feels that way. They're doing it to get their own needs met. We are all selfish at heart. It's very tempting to take that, that particular um, situation and turn it into something that's a personal attack, but it's really not. It's just one person trying to be happy in any way they can. Now, they may not be doing it the right way, but it's not a deliberate act of malice. Now, the interesting thing about infidelity is that it's not really the reason why a man decides to leave his wife. It isn't. It may be the crisis event, but it's not the reason he leaves. In reality, it was both of them. Two people not communicating well, not connecting well, not devoting themselves to the goal of one healthy relationship. Sure, it may feel like one person was more of a victim in the relationship than the other. In truth, it was always both of them. 
In other words, blaming a cheating partner on the end of a relationship is like blaming your car for breaking down. It's really more about the maintenance and paying attention to how well things are running. Okay. Sign number four, changes. Let's face it, people change. Sometimes we grow together and sometimes in different directions. What I'm talking about here is obviously growing apart. This happens frequently in marriages where the couple got together at a really early age or they just didn't know enough about where the other person was heading with their life. Now, this can be overcome pretty simply by communicating well. That's it. That's what usually solves all of your relationship problems. And making sure that your self-esteem doesn't feel threatened by his growth and development. In the end, that's what gets in the way most of all. If you're communicating regularly and you're connecting with your partner regularly, you will have a distinct advantage in your relationship. You'll notice when things change and you'll know what to do about them. Sign number five is acting up from insecurities and unresolved personal issues. The ugly truth is that many people who get married do so to cover up their own issues that they don't want to deal with. It's much easier to date somebody who gives you a sense of self-worth than it is to spend a lot of hours with a therapist or a counselor working out your inner demons so that you get rid of them. Ultimately, I believe that childhood issues that are never addressed are really the sole cause of almost all the world's problems when we become an adult. Look at our governments, our institutions, and the dysfunction of so many different parts of our society. It all came from people who hadn't healed from the problems of their childhood. Now, of course, this sounds oversimplified, but ultimately, it's true. One thing every person needs to do when they're in a relationship is seek a little bit of outside feedback. You don't have to jump right into therapy, but you do need to have a voice of reason to help you through the difficult parts. Sign number six, intimacy issues. Yes, what I'm talking about here is more along the lines of physical intimacy, bedroom stuff. Yeah, you know, the SEX word. When there are physical issues that come up between the two people in a relationship, they can be pretty significant. But again, just like with infidelity, these issues, they can be tackled and handled if you catch them early on. Most of the crippling and destructive force in relationships is complacency. The willingness to pretend that something isn't happening that obviously is. And it's usually that complacency that creates a marriage that's destined to fail. When one or both people in the relationship refused to confront the issues when they came up instead of pre pretending that they're not there, you gotta confront them. And bedroom problems are no different. When those needs are not getting met, that's when we start seeking our own solution elsewhere. Sign number seven, needs aren't recognized. All relationships go through a tough time now and again. It's only natural. But when your needs aren't seen or his needs aren't visible, that's when problems can really show up. Each person in the relationship, you and him, need their, you have to have your needs validated and seen. That's it, really, point blank. We need to know that what we want in a relationship is both acceptable and known by our partner. If we suspect our partner isn't noticing us, doesn't care about our needs, that's when we start to protect ourselves. We start to push away. Instead of being vulnerable and resolving the issue, we put up our shields, and that's when things go downhill. If there isn't some kind of major corrective action taken, couples therapy or counseling, then one or both people might feel that the situation is hopeless. It's not hopeless, and it's never hopeless because there is no hope. It's hopeless because neither the man nor the woman has the skill to navigate their way out of the problems. But what if you're the other woman? Will he leave his wife for you? What do you do if you're that other woman, right? First off, you have to realize the situation you're in. First of all, your emotions have you completely wrapped up in this one guy. You know he's in the arms of another woman, whether or not he's actually in love with her, his wife. Your jealousy probably pokes at you every single day. All you think about is how you and him can be together, sometimes without even asking the question, should you be together? Second thing that's really important about this situation for you is he's split in two. This man is not really a valid candidate for a relationship. Why? Because he's already in a relationship. I know that should be obvious, but you'd be amazed how many women deny that simple fact. Now, that might sound a little bit silly, again, but most people don't think about that when they get into an affair. He might have children from his marriage. He has an established lifestyle with this woman. As much as you might want to believe he'll leave her for you, in all likelihood, he probably won't. In fact, many women find they turn out to be just a catalyst. In other words, she becomes this, his, his mistress, if you will, becomes somebody who inspires him to get out of his ugly marriage, but he might not end up staying with the woman, his other woman on the side. The most important thing to ask yourself is, why did you choose an unavailable man? 
It's a hard question, but believe me, you gotta face it. The truth is this guy is not available. The only way he's gonna leave his wife for you is if his marriage is so horrible that it's a complete nightmare, which is kind of rare actually, or you and he forge an unbreakable connection that not only supports him, but sustains you and your emotional needs. Now I'll tell you up front, I have people in my family, I won't name them, but there's people that I know who have had affairs, several people, and some of them have even turned it into a relationship, okay? But the best thing you can possibly do is to put that kind of relationship on hold until he leaves his wife. And even then, he probably is gonna need months or maybe even years to heal from it all. Now, in the end, here's the most important thing. It's probably the thing you've been waiting for this whole video. The most important thing is to know what to do when he might be thinking about leaving you. Let's start with the first tip to get him back. The critical skill for relationships is empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person, but that's not all. The truth is there are three forms of empathy. There's cognitive empathy. That's where, duh, you kind of understand a person's experience. If somebody stubs their toe, you know that hurts, right? But you don't actually feel it. That's the old walk in another person's shoes or understand their perspective. Then there's emotional empathy. That's where you actually experience the other person's emotions. A lot of women do this. This is not very productive though, and it can be difficult to handle and work with. Then there's compassionate empathy. This is where you feel somebody's pain, but you take action to help them out. It's constructive. It goes somewhere. And it's that last one that's probably the most important one. So ask yourself, do you feel his pain? And can you separate yourself from it to help him as best you can? Because in order for him to come around and reinvest himself in your relationship again, he's going to need to know that you are on his side. Men can be difficult to reach. There's no doubt about that. But if you think that he's flawed because he doesn't speak his feelings the way a woman would, that could hold you back, right? You're going to look at him as being damaged in some way, but he's not. And this brings me to the most important tip to bring him back to you. You must know Absolutely, you must know how to connect with him. You must know how to connect with men. The only thing you can do that will guarantee a connection between you and him is to know that he feels connected to you. If you don't know that for a fact, if you can't see those signs, if you don't even know what those signs are, it's only a matter of time before he's going to look for that connection somewhere else. So what is that connection? Well, the fact of the matter is that the connection almost always takes care of itself as long as you're not making mistakes that push him away from you, okay? And it's just a, it's the most common mistake that women make is not knowing how men feel connected and then not making the mistakes that break that connection. There are reasons that men run from relationships. There are reasons he's afraid to commit and it's not what you might think. It's not this universal, um, what they call it, commitment phobia. That's a myth, by the way. Men don't fear being connected to you. What they fear is making a mistake in choosing the wrong woman. You see, a guy has a very limited ability to read relationships. He has a very limited ability to, uh, his skills in relationships basically are not as good as yours. You can probably, you can pat yourself on the back all you want about that, but the truth of that is until you can meet him where he is, you're still not gonna have that connection, okay? No matter how good you are, if you can't meet him where he is, he's never going to feel it. And it's the most important thing is for him to feel it with you. Guys are actually very simple to read. It's one of the easiest things to learn. It's easy enough, easy as reading a book, really. If you wanna know what the signals are that he's giving off, what are the emotional signs he's giving off? You may think he's not feeling those emotions, but he is, and he's actually showing you in lots of different ways, how he feels about you, how he feels about the relationship, whether or not he's gonna to commit to you, whether or not he's gonna really adore you, and how much he really will commit himself to you and the relationship. Reading men's signals is probably the most important thing a woman can learn because as you know, guys don't just show this stuff. We're trained from a very young age, not by necessarily by our parents, by uh, society in general, we're trained to not show how we feel because no man is looked upon as being strong when he's busy weeping on somebody else's sleeve. Sorry to say, but that's just not the way to really form a relationship for a guy. He's not gonna go that route. 
And quite honestly, if a man was that sensitive and that heartfelt, you would soon start to feel really repulsed by him. We are drawn to strength. Women are drawn to strength and so are men. But when it comes to relationships, you do also need to have that part of him that's compassionate and will connect with you, that will open up and talk about how he feels to you. You want that, don't you? Well, you can have it. That's the kind of relationship every woman can have if she just does one simple thing. She learns how men work. It's not difficult. It's very easy, in fact. And I'll show you how to do that. Go to this little link you see below me here. That's right. It's datingfire.com forward slash free book. Now you're asking me, what, Carlos, what's this free book got? Well, first of all, I'm going to show you the mistakes that women make. There are seven really huge mistakes that women make that make men pull away from the relationship. I'm going to show you what those are. Then after you uh, get that book, you're also going to just put your email in the form, by the way, and I will start sending you my VIP newsletter. I'll send you links to my podcast, my videos, all sorts of great stuff. But most importantly, right after you sign up, you're going to get for free a look at how to read his signals. You've got to learn this one essential skill. Without it, you're going to be flying blind in the skies of that relationship, and it's very likely that you're going to crash. So you've got to know how to read those signals. Hey, this is Carl Scavallo from datingfire.com and datingadviceguru.com. Make sure you do the big three before you run away. If you like this video, hey, you're still here, right? So you might as well, what? Like and subscribe. Turn on notifications so you know when the next one comes out. And of course, if you have any other questions or you want to suggest a video, leave that in the comment section below. Again, go on over to datingfire.com forward slash free book. Get your free book, get your free newsletter, uh, just some great stuff that I've got for you and a look at how to read his signals. Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo. As always, live and love with passion.